Hello, BookTube. I have another wonderful tag for you today. I was tagged by Miranda Hayes. It's uh, the cliches tag. Uh, and I thought we'd get right to it. Uh, cliche number one is actions speak louder than words. A book that wasn't or couldn't be better than the movie. <laughs> and if, as you've been watching this channel, you know that my answer to that question is, what book could be better than the movie adaptation? The movie adaptation is almost always better. Uh, but I, in in lieu of the millions that I could list, I listed, I jotted down a few more. Uh, the great old movie called Night of the Generals was made from a terrible, terrible novel. Uh, Jurassic Park, another perfect example, an unreadable book. It was made into an absolute instant classic of a movie. Uh, Forrest Gump. Winston Groom got lucky with that one. Just like William Kotzwickel got lucky with E.T. These people are living forever off the proceeds of great movies made from their crappy books. Uh, the 300. It's a very good graphic novel by Frank Miller, but it's a much better movie. Um, let's see here. The Life of Pi. Book is Maudlin Claptrap. The movie is actually very good. Uh, any adaptation of Arthur Miller's Treakley, The Crucible. <laughs> Another case in point, uh, Children of Men, P.D. James, bumbling her way through science fiction, but the movie's great. <laughs> uh, so anyway, <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> uh, cliche number two, the grass is always greener on the other side, a rags to riches or riches to rags story. And while we're on the subject of movies that are infinitely better than their source material, I thought I'd stick with movies, and that is the Albert Finney, Carol Burnett version of Annie. <laughs> the old comic strip Annie. The movie is incredible. If you haven't seen it, see it. <laughs> see it right away. Uh, and he sings, Albert Finney. <laughs> he mows people down with a Tommy gun in Miller's Crossing, but he sings in Annie. <laughs> uh, cliche number three, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. A parent-child relationship that you loved. And the one I have in mind was just in the news because it's just been adapted or bought for an adaptation to live action. And that's Lone Wolf and Cub by Kazuo Kuiki. A uh, graphic novel about a samurai and his little boy, his little baby, uh, and the adventures that they go on. <laughs> uh, cliche number four, you can't judge a book by its cover, a great book that needs a better cover. And I have an example here for this one, but it really could apply to almost any contemporary American fiction, all of which have this thing happening, where the cover design is simply text. <laughs> Last year there were 50 of them. This year, there have been 50 of them, where it's just text. Seating arrangements. Look that up on Google. See exactly what I mean. Every book that year had that cover. Just the words. <laughs> That's not a cover design. That's the cover designer phoning it in and collecting a paycheck for nothing. <laughs> no wonder UK books make American books look sick. Uh, but I promised, I, would, I promised myself I wouldn't get too ranty in this video, so let's move on. Uh, number five, you can't please everyone. A book you love uh, or hate that everybody else hates or loves. For me, it would, of course, be something I hate that everyone loves. Uh, and that's The Girls, which is making all the Critical Darling rounds now, and which was just awful. <laughs> just awful. And not just on the sentence-by-sentence -sentence level, but on a deeper conceptual level. It is not just a bad book but a deeply unhealthy one. <laughs> I just don't understand the brush fire of critical acclaim. It's just this... We've mentioned it before on this channel, this silly, you know, I touched you last musical chairs attitude in the, in the professional book reviewing world. Sometimes gets the worst of it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, cliche number six, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Notice, sometimes I'll have to do a clarifying video on the truth of all these cliches, <laughs> or they're false. They are interesting in their own right, cliches, but uh, a book that you're a better person for having read. I have it right here. I haven't shown it to you yet on this channel. <laughs> I don't think there's any chance this will be the only time I'll show it to you. It's a chunker, <laughs> and it's a terrifying one. <laughs> it's Give It As Day. It's The City of God by St. Augustine, <laughs> in which he uses the, the, uh, the framework of Christian theology and mythology to understand everything. <laughs> and since he was the smartest person in the world at the time, he comes almost an inch away from succeeding. It is a life-changing book to read. <laughs> I uh, highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Cliche number seven, Love is Blind, a book with a disabled or blind main character. And boy, do I have a humdinger for this. Look, it's this one. Frank Miller's Daredevil. 
Born Again with artwork by the great David Mazzucchelli. Uh, this is, if you have never read a graphic novel, you could read this one and love it. If you have not read this, but you read graphic novels, you need to read this. It's incredible. Uh, those of you who have read it will know what I mean. It's, it's one of the best graphic novels ever done. Uh, number eight, Ignorance is Bliss, a book you know is bad, but that you don't want to admit. <laughs> <laughs> Nuff said. <laughs> uh, cliche number nine. There's no time like the present. Uh, your favorite contemporary book. Please, book two. <laughs> Do you have even the slightest idea how many contemporary books I read in one month, let alone one year, let alone my favorite ever? <laughs> I'm not going to pick a favorite contemporary book. Good Lord. <laughs> Let's just move on to the next one. Uh, Cliché number 10, better safe than sorry, a book you don't want to read because it might be bad, which is a, that's a great question. Uh, and it really hinges on the whole concept of what fandom is, what it is to be a fan of an author, because that's where it strikes. You don't want to read a book by an author because you're a fan of that author and you're worried they'll let you down. And that happens all the time. That's happened to me many times in my reading life. Uh, the humorist and columnist Russell Baker used to come out regularly with a book every year or so, and sometimes more ambitious things than that. And you never knew, especially as he got older. He's, I think, 350 right now. And once he hit the 200 mark, as happens with writers, he started to get a little iffy. <laughs> uh, another 350-year-old, Garrison Keillor, started off his writing career with a great book, like Wobegon Days is a great book. And the quality of the ones that followed after that has been uneven, and you never know. So you, you go into it with trepidation. Uh, Thomas Pynchon, the author of a couple of the greatest American novels of the 20th century, but also the author of Inherent Vice. <laughs> I think. Maybe he doesn't remember writing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's fandom that's at issue with this one, and I, I'm as vulnerable to it as anybody. I, when I, an author I really like writes a new book, I clench up a little. The only thing is I don't refuse to read it. Of course, I read it all the more eagerly, even though I might be disappointed, and so should you. <laughs> uh, and let's see here. Oh, well, well that was the end. <laughs> that was really painless, wasn't it? So uh, now it's left for me to tag. I tag Ben Sanders. I tag Justin from Fever to Ego. And of course, I tag the mighty Francina Sidon. I want to know what Francina's answers are to these since she's a writer. <laughs> Uh, and there you have it. That is the cliches tag. And I'll, uh, I'll if I remember correctly, I'll, I'll leave all the stuff the book names and everything down below so that you can hunt them down at your leisure. <laughs> Thank you, book two.